Hi, I'm Dr. Sula Taisir. I'm a pediatrics and neonatology specialist and healthcare consultant on MedSynapse Medical Platform. Today, I'm very pleased to have Dr. Ines Adeya as my dear guest. Uh, welcome, Dr. Ines. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Ines, it's not your first time, of course, with us on MedSynapse, um, and all uh, the previous episodes were very, very informative. So today, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, but let me first introduce you to our audience. So Dr. Ines Atey is a professor uh, of dermatology uh, and venerology in Faculty of Medicine, Ain Shams University, Cairo, Egypt, and currently working as a consultant, senior consultant dermatologist uh, in Saha Abu Zabi UAE. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us. And today we're going to talk about the seborrheic dermatitis. So can you please let us know first what is seborrheic dermatitis uh, and simplify it to us? Okay, seborrheic dermatitis is dermatitis which affects the seborrheic sites, which mainly the sites which are uh, including um, uh, the most uh, concentration of the sebaceous glands or the oil glands of the skin. So mainly we see it in the scalp, in the face, uh, particularly the eyebrows, uh, mm-hmm. around the nostrils, um, sometimes around the ears, sometimes the beard and mustache area of uh, the nails. Okay. And also we see sometimes in uh, the chest, around the navel, and uh, in severe cases, we see also in skin folds. Okay. And what are the common symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis? Of course, there is greasy scales. Mm-hmm. And the simplest form of this is the dandruff. Okay. The regular scalp dandruff. Mm-hmm. If it is the most severe form, it will come to uh, greasy scales with redness, itching, inflammation. Mm-hmm. And it can proceed to the sites which uh, we uh, informed before about the predilection yes. signs. Uh, and uh, what are the main causes of seborrheic dermatitis? Is there a genetic cause or background? There is, of course, there is genetic background mm-hmm. and there is a personal, somehow your personal secretion of the oil glands okay. uh, is uh, perverted. Mm-hmm. So it's not produced in uh, the fatty acids which are regular. So okay. certain fatty acids uh, or the constituent of the fatty acids is different. Uh, this is uh, will uh, inclu- uh, include some fatty acids which will uh, change the pH of the skin okay. and induce inflammation. Mm-hmm. Uh, some environmental factors uh, will make it worse mm-hmm. or will precipitate uh, seborrheic dermatitis, okay. uh, such as the presence of stress, uh, hormone effects, mm-hmm. uh, the kind of food, the type of uh, yes. uh, food style. Mm-hmm. Uh, the using of faulty cosmetics on the skin or the yes. skull, mm-hmm. yes, and some kinds of um, uh, drugs, some drugs such as the psychotropic drugs can uh, can provoke or increase the seborrheic dermatitis. Mm-hmm. Some diseases are associated with seborrheic dermatitis, such as HIV, Parkinson's disease. Mm. Okay. Uh, some also changes in the, atmos- the atmospheric uh, climate. Yes. Uh, because it's more common in winter time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more common in humid uh, countries. Mm-hmm. So the exposure to the sun also uh, somehow increase uh, the seborrheic dermatitis in, in some yes. patients. So do you think, doctor, that uh, dry skin, uh, if uh, if patients uh, leave their their skin always dry, it triggers or flares up the seborrheic dermatitis? No, actually, we, we don't recommend that the patient is not uh, using moisturizer or keeping mm-hmm. the skin dry because of seborrheic dermatitis. Because as you know, uh, our skin is the biggest organ in the body and it contains uh, water contains 70% of, uh, of its weight. Yes. And there is somehow imbalance between the oil secretion and the water in seborrheic dermatitis. So mm-hmm. contrary that people will uh, will think that with seborrheic dermatitis, they don't need to moisturize. No, yes. we need to, to moisturize, but we will use water in an oil or watery mm-hmm. uh, moisturizer rather than the oil. So we have to balance again the excess oil with water. Okay, and uh, the seborrheic dermatitis comes in children uh, as well or only in adults? No, it comes in children from infant uh, age, you know, okay. about the credit cap which we see in infants, yes. it's uh, it's very common because uh, it's triggered by the maternal hormones mm-hmm. uh, during the pregnancy or also after uh, pregnancy, after labor with mm. the breastfeeding. So they, um, they, they happen in the first year of life. 
uh, with the thick uh, greasy scales uh, adherent to the scalp of the baby yes uh, that we call it cradle cap okay so so uh, and this means that dandruff is a type or a first stage or one of the signs of the seborrheic dermatitis yes greasy dandruff hmm. uh, per se it can be the first sign of seborrheic dermatitis because dandruff by itself it's only flakes Mm -hmm. It denotes that there is some inflammation of the skin, yes. but it doesn't uh, mean that it's seborrheic dermatitis because there are other conditions also that will manifest with dandruff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And doctor, how do uh, you advise uh, new mothers that have uh, newborns with cradle cap? Because, you know, some uh, misconception... Uh, uh, it's very common about uh, you just uh, uh, do like this in your baby's scalp and try to remove it, to remove this uh, cradle cap. So do you, do you think that this is a right thing or not? No, it's not a right thing, but we, we advise them to use vegetable oil or simply yes. olive oil, mm -hmm. which they put it first in a hot bath, mm -hmm. so the oil will be a little bit warm. Okay. And keep it on the scalp of the baby for a few minutes uh, until it softens uh, these um, adherent uh, greasy oh. scales. And then comp it gently uh, to remove. Okay. And use the appropriate uh, baby shampoos. And how long does it take to, uh, to, be, uh, disappear, to disappear, to disappear, uh, this cradle cap? Usually in the first year of life, uh, mothers will, will notice in the first year of life. Uh, but it can be uh, more severe in the in the first month. Okay. Then uh, it will disappear by itself bit by bit. If it didn't disappear, mm -hmm. this means that maybe there is a fungal infection or uh, as uh, as you know, the pathogenesis of seborrheic dermatitis. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, scales uh, we have uh, fungus that uh, it uh, it is growing uh, as a commensal on our uh, scalp and the greasy areas, which is malassezia. Hmm. So the persistence of the um, scales and the seborrheic dermatitis and the inflammation, it's connected somehow to uh, uh, excess hmm. uh, malassezia growth. So hmm. if the if they don't disappear, so maybe there is fungal infection or hmm. there is excess malassezia overgrowth, mm -hmm. or the diagnosis is not correct because yeah. it can manifest also in atopic dermatitis, in psoriasis, hmm. in contact dermatitis. In babies particularly, we have to think about ichthyosis, we have mm -hmm. to think about uh, biotin deficiency yeah. or other uh, deficiencies such as zinc deficiency. So we have to exclude other conditions as well if it, it didn't respond to the treatment or it's not um, going away um, as soon as expected. Okay. And how do we treat uh, seborrheic dermatitis? Is there stages for seborrheic dermatitis, mild, moderate, and severe? Is there different treatments for different uh, grades? Yes, of course. In mild cases, uh, only anti-dandruff, uh, the antifungal shampoos uh, mm -hmm. are co uh, commonly used to uh, control. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is moderate, uh, usually we prescribe uh, with it the topical uh, steroids, corticosteroids. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is um, if it is severe, uh, or we think about that there is malignity overgrowth, we uh, prescribe systemic antifungals. Okay. And the topical antifungals uh, with corticos with or without corticosteroids. Mm. If it is re not responding or resistant to treatment, uh, now uh, there is uh, growing evidence that anti-inflammatory uh, topical uh, agents are working well in seborrheic dermatitis, such as calcium inhibitors. Mm. Uh, also, there is uh, rufimolast, which is uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Okay. So these agents are coming, and I probably that we will see also soon. Uh, we are using systemic anti-inflammatory drugs okay. in cases of severe disseminated uh, seborrheic dermatitis. Okay, and uh, if a mother having uh, a kid with seborrheic dermatitis, uh, is there a certain food that she must not give to this child? You know, it's it's uh, an infant stage. We don't see. Uh, the um, the seborrheic dermatitis uh, all all okay. all over the ages we will okay. see in the infantile stage hmm. while well, the baby is only nursed so okay. uh, there is no he's not uh, usually taking any food and, and the mother oh, I, I would I was just asking you if the mother needs to stop certain food while she's breastfeeding her uh, her child who has seborrheic dermatitis 
or no? There is no much studies about this, mm -hmm. but I believe that uh, if I balance the diet with the exclusion of the uh, greasy food or high carbs food, yes. uh, it can help. Uh, and increase, of course, of the antioxidants and minerals. Okay. Uh, then we will see the, that seborrheic dermatitis is more common in adolescents and uh, young adults mm. because it's related to hormones. Hormone change, yes. Uh, during the adolescence and, uh, and adult uh, stage mm -hmm. for uh, this uh, excess uh, sebum secretion and seborrheic dermatitis, mm -hmm. also some researchers, they found that using isoprotinoin, the very known uh, uh, medicine yes. for acne, they are using for uh, for certain cases of seborrheic dermatitis. Okay, and uh, is there any uh, home or natural remedies that can help uh, patients with seborrheic dermatitis to uh, to get better with just normal and natural remedies? Some oils to be used, some uh, homemade uh, creams or oil. We don't recommend to use uh, homemade or uh, scrubs or like this because yes. you know. Uh, after all, it can worsen it and they can make yes. it instead of break dermatitis to contact dermatitis. Yes, this is what so, I wanted to hear from um, you so can so the audience can know this one. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's not preferable that they will use their own uh, homemade or kitchen made remedies. Yes, because sometimes we see on social media now uh, many people who are not doctors who uh, just make some home remedies and they tell everyone that will help you in seborrheic dermatitis, atopic dermatitis and so on. So yeah, I wanted to know this from an expert. Mm -hmm. The patient, they are coming after they put like uh, some uh, masks with uh, yes. they put uh, with lemon with or they make like uh, they put they make their own shampoos and they put vinegar. Yes, all of this can make it worse and can irritate the the skin and the scalp. So it's not preferable to use their own remedies. Okay, and uh, one last question, please. If uh, someone uh, in his infancy uh, was affected with seborrheic dermatitis, is it common for him to have it one more time in during his adolescent phase? It's related uh, somehow to the maternal uh, hormones, so it's not uh, uh, like uh, there is no correlation between this and that. Mm -hmm. Although, if there is genetic predisposition, he will stay with the genetic predisposition, and he can have another bout uh, of the symptoms during uh, early adolescence and uh, early adulthood. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, doctor. We had a great uh, session with you and it was very informative about some dermatitis and definitely we'll have more and more episodes with you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much for your time. Have a great day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you.